Hello everyone, it's that time of the week again, time for another edition of Wardy's Waffle. A lot going on in this one, so all new machinery enthusiasts will like this. So on the back of the RX we have something here, look. I'm not going to say what it is yet, but thank you to Mascio. Quite a lot of footage of this. Uh, also, we have got the Grange and Coon strip till cultivators up on the heath in front of sugar beet. Um, also, we uh, have been planting sugar beet as well with the Amazon you saw in last week's video. Also, there's going to be an update on the NFU, uh, on the NFU Red Tractor, the farm assurance meeting that we had in Lincolnshire this week. So a bit of an update on that. But I just want to start with the um, flood recovery fund. Huge uproar this week and rightly so because uh, Henry and uh, other farmers in that area who is under that 2,000 acres of water haven't qualified for the flood recovery fund. Yet probably that flood is the most, um, what's the word, uh, renowned uh, uh, famous flood in the country because it first happened in October, whereas a lot of the floods happened in January. But yes, very, very wrong that it wasn't. Uh, I've been uh, in touch with, with DEFRA, um, with Mark Spencer, uh, Robbie Moore, the flooding minister, and also some of the uh, RPA senior guys uh, and helping trying to get this rectified along with the rest of the NFU and other people. I'm pleased to say I think that is looking positive, but it, it's still a long way to go. Thanks very much for watching this and we'll see you at the end. So it's time for another dose of nitrogen on the wheat crops that we've got planted. This will be the last one. We normally put three on, but we're only going down to two now to try and um, get the crop to respond better. And we're always too late. We're always May with a third dose and you can scorch it a bit then when the crop's bigger. So we're gonna, this will be the last one on the wheat. So it uh, looks like whether the sprayer's been filled up first and, uh, and then filling the bowser. So those tanks hold 50,000 litres in each tank and we can soon get some more from Omex if we need any. So Ruben's gone with the sprayer and this, we put the pipe onto the bottom of the tank like that, just put a can under it to catch the odd drip. That tank, you can see that tank's marked. It's full that one was this morning and then into the Valve work here. It's a Honda engine and it pumps, I think it's a thousand litres a minute, that's what it pumps on three inch pipe work which this valve is on. So, and for those who haven't seen it, we've got one compartment from the back there through to here and then that's a total separate, separate compartment. So when we go out spraying and using this for back up the sprayer, we can mix chemical in here in that one and then have water in the back. Works really well. So we're at Rise Home at College on the edge of the showground, all set up for the farm assurance meeting. There is a survey also to fill in. So those of you who can't get to the meeting today because of drilling or spraying, which I think there'll be quite a few do that, there is this survey to fill in. So please do uh, fill that survey in. This is the original scheme when Red Tractor was uh, first started. You just see the thickness of it for a start. And it is about food safety none of the things in here about the what three words location of shed doors nothing about what tonnage have we got in store or sold so that is the original scheme we're just about to start the farm assurance meeting at lincoln We've got probably 20 odd farmers here turned up but the weather outside is good as you can see and so if people are drilling spraying we're at rise home college this is part of Bishop Burton and on the edge of the Lincolnshire showground. I was a governor here for six years, up to about two years ago, and Rhonda worked here as well. So some good connections here. Right, let's go and start this, uh, this meeting. We're putting some more fertiliser on. You can just see the sprayed off areas are working. Sorry, the, the mapped areas are working. Switching off when you get to the bare patches. Got it set so that uh, because we're not on individual nozzle control on the sprayer um, and each section it varies the outside of the sprayer is one nozzle on a section then we go the next section is a nozzle then the next section I think is two nozzles then we go four nozzles and then four and then eight till we get to the middle 
and then and then when you get to the middle and work the other way it goes downwards so you've got one and one nozzle on the outside so exactly mirrored the reason we've done that is because when you turn in at the ends if you're not quite dead right you may only be overlapping six inches or, or a foot so it only wants one section to come off so that's why we've done it like that and we had that with the last sprayer and it worked really well actually so if the good crop is in the middle of a section rather than the good crop not getting any we've got it set so it's a hundred percent overlap so the area where there isn't a crop actually gets some so that means that the area where there is a crop will actually get some product if, if i've explained that well enough um so it, it, it's the it's the only way i've done it we've mapped it really tightly as well so say here look you can see there we've got there there's virtually no crop there and then as you come here a bit of crop so we've mapped it fairly tight but it does work uh, on the big areas and I'll have a look and explain and show you some of the maps and the savings we've uh, we've had so there's some big areas here with no crop on now whether to the right hand side of the screen the sprayer switches off as it's coming through now you can see the spray coming out the fertilizer coming out yeah it's switched off there you can see there they are on again some of it on some of it off off in the middle behind the sprayer and you can see here there we go off on again so that's working really well we'll go in the cab and just have a round in the cab so that should be switching off in a minute it's coming back on again we're on the headland now So we'll just turn around. There's a big bear patch here. You see there are bits switching on. So yesterday we had the red tractor meeting at Lincoln. Um, and thank you to everybody who came. We had about 21 of us all together there, I think somewhere there. Two hour meeting just over, um, some really good input from everybody. So thank you for those of you who came. And I think the um, long and short of it is just a bit of a summary. I think to get from this, uh, the summary from the morning is that people aren't happy. Everybody's not happy. I'm not happy with, with um, the, the scheme at the minute and what's being required from it. And I think the consensus was that we need to take the scheme back to the basics. It was originally brought out um, 25 years ago, whenever it was, for, uh, for soup food safety so that we could guarantee um, or give the public confidence that the food they were eating that we produced was safe to eat. That's what it was brought out for. But since then, it's gone away from that now. And um, it needs to go back to basics and it needs to be just for food safety. So I think that is one point that, that really it, it came out from yesterday's meeting. Lots of things that are in there now don't need to be such as mass balance, uh, tons in store, tons harvested, how many tons have gone off the farm, all that sort of thing. That's not required. That's not part of food safety. What three words location of the grain store doorways? What's that for, to do with food safety? That's not needed. Um, and also uh, came out that, that really could it be um, actually monitored by farmers and could farmers assess other farmers? Could it be self-regulating? That was an interesting point that came out from that. And really the supermarkets have too much say in it. Uh, they're dictating it. And this is a scheme for farmers. It needs to be designed, designed by farmers and run by farmers. Uh, that was what the main points that came out. One other really interesting point was imports and food standards, that it's quite clearly wrong that uh, if Red Tractor was brought out and, and is here to guarantee or to give public confidence in the food that we produce is safe to eat, if imports are coming into this country, um, you can't guarantee the safety. So put it another way, a plate of food sat in front of you, some of that food's covered by a red tractor and some of it's not. So the part of that food that's imported and isn't covered by a red tractor, then what is the point of it? What's the point of red tractor at all if you can't guarantee the whole plate you're eating is safe to eat? So I think that's where it's wrong that imports, imported grain and imported produce 
uh, need to come under uh, Red Tractor to 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 make it a level playing field. I thought that was what mo most people were were saying as well. So that's a bit of a resume. Eh? Two hour meeting. Thank you for everybody coming. And um, I've had two days of Red Tractor because I have now just had my Red Tractor audit and. I've got, uh, uh, last year, a year or two ago, I set up a folder. So I've got a red tractor folder and naturally it's red in colour. I have got a list, let's get my glasses on. I've got a list of the scheme standards here. Actually, I'll just turn my camera around then I can, uh, then I can show you. So these are the various sections and scheme standards. So I have got a folder with all of these duplicated. And then when we go into the sections, there's all the relevant paperwork required um, or needed in these very relevant sections, documents and um, procedures you can see there. So I go into here and there's all my various documents that I need here. Um, complaints record, they're none. So contingency emergency plan, I've got that in here as well as laminated and in the chemical store. And then personnel, and I've got various things underneath. So our general records, I've, I've um, highlighted various things we need to do um, health and safety policy that's an interesting one that should not come under red tractor it's too important a subject to come under red tractor uh, and then we've got another section here vermin control which that is important uh, soil management yes that's important but we're doing it ourselves soil management is important for us uh, for the generally for the whole farm here's my my map my plan soil management plan that i can also use this for sfi Here's another soil management plan that I've got showing um, potential uh, overflooding of the river and things like that. This is a big section. This environment impact, conservation and sustainability, uh, integrated I pest management, IPM, storage, various sections here under storage about temperatures, where we keep things about monitoring, drying equipment and also cleaning forklifts and various things. We record it all in the money to uh, in the diary, in the yard, in the cab. Uh, we've had two and a half hours here um, and you note the biscuits. I always like to give the assessor a packet of biscuits. It just sets the meeting off on a good tone and chocolate hot knobs as good as anything. So, um, yeah, so um, my audit's done. I've passed with no non-conformances, which is great. So that's good. Uh, it will get checked back to the office, apparently, according to the auditor, but that's fine. Um, so that's nice to know. Got it out of the way with for another year. But just going back to the meeting yesterday, one of the things that, that um, people were saying was as well that, that really the scheme does not cause less work because we still, with, H, with health and safety, we would still have an a, health and safety executive, so HSE visit. So just because we have it in red tractor doesn't stop that. So there's a duplication of lots of things here and an environment agency inspections. We have to put certain things in the um, in the audit here for the, to satisfy the environment agency, but that does not stop them still coming on farm and asking for to look at certain things. So there's definitely duplication here, which I thought was the aim of some of these schemes was not to have duplication. So the things that still need to be checked outside red tractor need taken out of red tractor in my view and everybody's view yesterday anyway that's it for this uh, for looking at red tractor and looking at um, this whole meeting we had yesterday and my red tractor audit and um, uh, yeah useful insight into red tractor uh, those of you who aren't farmers who watch this channel and see the logo on packets this is what it's all to do with food safety and things, but there's a lot more in it than, and it's unnecessary, some of it. But this is the type of audit we have to go through so that that sticker is on the food that you buy on a supermarket shelf. But also came up yesterday was the Union Jack, and it's quite clearly at the minute that there's a lot of food produce you carries the Union Jack simply because it's put in a packet in this country. The contents of the packet are foreign, but they are allowed to put the Union Jack on it, and that is really, really wrong. That should not be allowed. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling and waffling on about Red Tractor and all this. Just thought you'd be interested to see what we've got and I've passed for another year, which is great. So you can see we've got the Grange strip till machine behind. We've done a few rounds. Got the guys here from Ireland's Farm Machinery. And so Darrell here is from Ireland's and they're the agents for this. And then Tom and Sam from Grange Machinery. So we'll have a look around it, bit of an explain what it's doing and we'll see it running. So I've got Sam alongside me from Grange. We're going to have a look at this machine, Sam. Just a quick uh, run through of it. How wide is it? So we're on a three metre um, system today at 50 centimetre leg spacings. And the idea of this machine against a conventional cultivator? It's just to cultivate a strip ready yeah. to drill straight into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
um, at the same time as lifting the whole soil, soil profile yeah. within the machine. Yeah. Great, let's have a look at it. So you can see now, front disc, stabilising the machine there, the leg. And the two discs there retaining the soil, but there's not a lot here to retain in creating this. There we are, the disc there creating the till. And then they've got the press at the back. So it's those two discs there that are creating the till. And you see there's two for each row. Six rows. What are we on here, Sam? What width? Uh, 50, 50 centimetre leg spacings on these. Yeah. On this uh, And it can be moved. We can do uh, on three metres. We can do a 45 centimetres row spacing or a 75 centimetre. So just looking at the surface, you can see there. There's some sewage sludge. That's the black particles. But the machine's incorporated it in the row. And all black particles there. Doing a cracking job. We've got the Coon strip till machine here. We've got Tom from Farrells and David from Coon. We're going to go through this machine, have a look at it, and the setting up of it and the components of it. Then we're going to see it running. Right. Okay. So <laughs> we've got Tom here. You've seen we do a lot with the GPS with Tom and uh, David from Coon. So what do we got here, David? Just quickly so the machine. Here we've got our six-row, fifty-centimeter space in Striga 300. It's a three-meter mounted machine um, running on a six R185. Can the rows be, be altered, the width of them? Uh, manually, the, altered, the rows can be altered. Yeah. Um, so, which are from 45 centimetre up to sort of 80 centimetres. But these are set at 50. These, these are yeah, set most, at 50 yeah. at the moment for beat. So, Tom's just slowed down for us, otherwise, I'd need to be Linford Christie alongside him. So, you can see that front disc there cutting through a slot. What else is happening? The is behind just peeling the trash away, yep. which if you look in, in here, we've just got clean soil. Ah, so just in there. The trash is just away, ready for the legs to take through, to take out the, the harvest compaction and the harvest yes. traffic. Yeah. And these discs here just being very gentle, just pulling it back in. You can see that. And then the, the cage rollers, you can see, doing a great job. Of just you can just see there the... You can see what David said a minute ago, but if it's too sticky, it will pick up. Because you can see it's just picking up a little bit on that middle one. But it's okay, and if you go a bit faster, they're probably a bit self cleaning, aren't They'll they? Clean more They'll clean, clean more if you go too. faster. We're giving Tom the sign to go a bit more. A bit faster. Yeah, you can see it's closed the, the slot a bit. You can see the back wheels create a bit of tilt themselves. Yeah, so. Here, Dave, look at that straight away. Just by going that bit faster, it's actually done a better job. Yes, yeah, it's a much better to plant into. Yeah, it is. So the idea is that the sugar beet drill, when it comes tomorrow, will plant, we'll get it on the same GPS lines, and it will plant a row of sugar beet. One will be there, one will be there, another one there, and then the uncultivated, untouched ground in the middle here. Obviously, there'll be no beet. Doing a good job here. I like those rear cage wheels. You can just see they're creating a nice bit of tilt and breaking the top up. So this is the last breed with this now. So we've got the two machines this is side by side. You can see that cage roller. We do like that. more of a ridged finish this is the Grange a little bit rougher area where the seeds going whereas this is more flatter and where the seeds go and it's slightly finer soil but at the minute it's too wet to drill at the minute because you can just see it's really sticky just walking back to the yard you can just see here 
how badly it's so loaded here. Look at the lumps it's pulled out for light Heathland. It's just really not good. Hence the machine we're going to be using. You'll see in a few minutes on this clip. We haven't used it for over 20 years. While we've been trying the sugar beet uh, strip tell machines in the beet field, Ruben's washed, finished fertilising and washed the sprayer, get liquid nitrogen off. But he was just saying the amount, the amount of soil in the wheel motors have come out. You can see down there from when he nearly got stuck in a couple of fields when we were spraying off. That's all come out, the wheel motor housings. And it looks a lot better. But it's finished off properly with the power washers stop pumping hot water it's only cold water which is a bit of a devil but anyway that's the filling pipe that we had made brilliant actually so putting bows putting up to connect it up to the bowser then we just uncouple it there when we finish with the fertilizer and it's all hidden again under the under the cab so tom is spraying in the distance but look here look at this unbelievable how it's sunk in we knew i knew it was going to sink in on these corners shows how wet it is underneath. We are looking at maybe drilling this field in a couple of days, but looking at that just makes you wonder whether we're right or not. But this is only on the corners of the edges, it's like that. Anywhere that looks like this, you just know it's really soft. And that's the sort of effect you get. <laughs> so we've got this parahara running. Thanks to Mashio. We haven't used one of these for about 21 years since we got culture presses and things, but I thought it was about the only machine that would work in here. When you see it there straight off the solo, it's actually quite rough. We'd normally drill sugar beets straight into that, but it's not good enough. So it's eight meters wide. So I think it's two four metre paraharas really with a frame and gearboxes and things. So we're up here at the Heath Yard with the Amazon drill. That's the field we're going to be putting the beet sugar beet in, beet trials and things there. We're not using the front hopper here because we don't need companion crops or, or um, fertiliser here, but we will be using the front hopper when we come when this drill comes back to drill our capulet beans the baked beans but it's a different hopper which Josh is at the back of Amazon just changing some bits on the drill he'll talk us through it we'll just show what we're doing now we've had to change the seed selector wheels inside because it's got the wrong crop so what were these Josh what were these ones for that yeah, maze ones well, I'll just change over here and then it's in here if we, if it goes in there take our panel off yeah, and then there's your seed selector wheel in there. So you, depending on which seed heart you're putting in it, or seed knob, whichever yeah. you call, you take it off. And then on there, it just there's the numbers on there which represent the holes in the disc. So you just got to swap them over, like so. Yeah. And then your seed nine here. There's a black little bit in here which you then twist around and then just pull that off. off. Well, that's the new. That represents 34 holes around the circumference. Yeah. With a 2.2 mil hole size. Yeah. And then the one was in there previously was a 42.5, so 42 holes around the circumference with a 5 mil hole size. Right. So so sugar beet. It wants, put, it wants put, that one. Yeah, put blue discs in, goes slide in. around there, and then you twist your black yep. bit in there. That's it. That's and then it holds secure. it on. You've changed your seed selector wheel. Yeah. So when, you're, when, you're, when your seed has come round, it's then singling it off. So the seed will actually stick to each of those yeah, holes so with so air pressure. Yeah, so it's, a, it's an air pressurised system. So as you come round, you seed select the wheel, if there's any spare seed, it will then flick it back off yeah. to then allow your seed to drop down and go through your optical sensor. Yeah, and then drop for down then, to the ground. Yeah, for your singling system. So then that clips back on there like so. And then these little bits in there, you then twist one Simple there, that. and then twist one in there. So this is the seed we need for the field. There's four boxes in each. Here's the boxes. But um, these, we've got... The trials we're going to do that's one variety got to be split between 12 rows so what we've done is we've weighed one one box out into 12 bags because there's 12 rows 12 hoppers 
and that's uh, to, to get it. So we're only going to have one run and back up the field, which we'll show you in a minute, but we need to measure those out, which we've done. So these are the bags we've weighed them all out. So there's 253 grams of seed here. So this is another variety we've got to do that. But, so there's 12 of those in one of those. So, and that is enough to drill. It's enough to drill from here up to the far hedge and then back again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we've got Amazon's media guy here as well, just doing some for Amazon. So these are the hoppers. So obviously that bag there is not going to, the seed will hardly come up beyond that hole in the bottom and it will fill all the seed chamber in there. We've got the last bag here of this variety. <laughs> Look at that, it hasn't even come up the hole. So the whole of that chamber will be full. Hope we don't run out, hope we've got enough. We've only got one box of each variety. Finally, with getting the seed ready and everything, we're now coming in the field. It's all right, Sam's, <laughs> at Sam's daughter brought Oscar. My grandson. <laughs> so we're finally coming in here now just to get started and get these trials drilled. So you can just see how rough it is when we soloed. And you can see it's shiny. That shows it was wet here. Look at the lumps. You wouldn't believe that from our light heath soils. We've got no machine that would knock that down. I've never seen our land, this farm, cultivate so badly with the solo it just shows how wet it is and when you look at the lumps and I think this area might even need doing twice with the parahara but you see it's done a good job there for once we've got a bit of dust So it is all go up here. And here is grandson number two. <laughs> Little Charlie. <laughs> yes, not impressed at all. Uh, how old, Sam? Seven weeks. Seven weeks old, look at that. This is Charlie. And in grandson number one, Oscar, is just having his lunch in there. <laughs> Fantastic. Look at that. And then we've got Poppy. And of course, you all know Nala. Ian's got his drone out, Oscar's impressed with it. Ian's just done some footage of the Parahara, which is through there. So what's this, what's this one, Ian? The Maverick 3, DJI Maverick 3. So a couple of plots have been done, just, just checking the seed depth and making sure they're all right. Joss is just emptying to go on to another variety. So I have to put a little chute on, that little silver chute there to empty all the seed out into the box. And then we we'll put another variety in and off we go. We can't have any seed contamination, so that's why we need to get every unit cleaned out properly. Looking for some seed now in the rows. So Oscar's helping us. So that's where There's the seed is. I can't get any further. Nala's helping as well, so we've got plenty of hands. It's always difficult. Oh, here we go, look. There we go, there's yeah. a seed. Can you see here? Yeah. There, look, can you see that, that orange? Mm -hmm. There. So, so that's nicely lead. infirm soil in the moisture. There should be another one. The another one, we're planting them 17 centimetres yeah. apart. Did you find it? Oh, well done. Look. There we go, Oscar's found one. Yeah, yeah, there we go, Oscar, that's it. Right down there near your finger, that's it, perfect. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's it? what I normally do. Space a finger and a yeah. thumb out and it's normally not far off. We need to do what, Oscar? Come along with the fertilizer. Is that what we need? Yeah, what do you think we need to put on? Mm, I don't know. Don't know. <laughs> so Josh is just priming the unit to make sure seed's coming out. So you press that electric switch, 
you can see the seed coming out. You can see it, there we go, there's a bit come on the floor. See the orange seeds there. So that shows the seeds got all the way through to the metering wheel in here. So that front press wheel there is the one that if we had any fertiliser that would be placed in the fertiliser or companion crop but we haven't got any here so that's not doing anything so the seed, the sugar beets coming through between those two rubber rollers and then there's a press wheel you can just see running, sorry I can't hold it, in the middle there, a little press wheel in the middle that's firming the soil and the seed so it goes into moisture and then the back two that are angled that's just covering it, just firming it around the seed as well. Emptied one variety and put another variety in, but just want to show you the different seed. You can see that is blue. So let me just get a little bit of that in the there. You can see that seed is a different colour than this seed in the box there so the reason is it's the seed coating and the seed dressing this one has got what we call neonicotinoid seed treatment on and this one is to help with virus yellows which are carried by aphids and can actually ruin a crop and decimate the crop and this saves us putting insecticide on the crop so much this helps control the insecticide or helps sorry control the aphids and the green fly whereas that seed won't and it's because this is trial seed given to us by KWS and they have a job to get hold of me and it treated seed whereas that is the treated seed, you can see it's a different colour and that just shows the different seed treatments in those two boxes so that's the last of the uh, cultivated plots done we're now on to the strip till plot right place that's the unit remember that puts the seed in the ground you can see there the units right in the row which is great beauty of GPS So that's the strip, or sorry, the trial's finished with the Amazon drill here for sugar beet, but it's this same drill, same machines coming back to drill our capulet beans. Uh, that's the bait beans. It's going to do all the 150 acres, and that'll be coming back in uh, early to mid-May. So we'll get off now and uh, take the Polaris back to uh, back to the yard, and we're going to empty the seed drill out, and we're going to have a look at um, the. Uh, Harrowing, and also we've got the seed dressers coming to dress some barley seed. That's it, Josh is heading off now, going to fill up with fuel. I think it's only right when you have demonstrations like this, you to provide fuel for the tractor, so he's going to fill up with fuel and he's heading off to Stamford and then you'll see that drill back here again in um, May sometime when we do the Capulet beans.